Hey, Hannah Mouse one here. Some of you guys may remember that I did a WoW Games game jam on a while back in which I made a game called A Fisherman's Life, and if you don't, you may otherwise be aware of my devlog series for A Farmer's Life, which I made inspired by my game jam submission. Well, Jimmy hosted another jam, and you know that I had to go for it. The theme of this jam was growth, which didn't really give me anything right off the bat. I actually started the art before coming up with anything, animating a tree growing up from a tiny seedling because that was the only thing that the word growth made me think of. I knew that I had to keep this project really small in scope because because of a little thing, not really important, just a little, you know. It's slap bang in the middle of my A-levels. So a scratch game couldn't really be my number one priority and my need to revise constantly niggled at the back of my mind. Which led me to the conclusion that I would make possibly the smallest scope game I could come up with, the clicker game. Oh, and for some reason I really wanted to do something with bees. Genuinely no clue why, just wanted to include bees in my game. So I got the basic mechanic of clicking to upgrade the tree sorted before creating a bar to indicate how close the tree is to leveling up. If you really want a helpful guide on how to do this, check out Griff Patch's video on smooth health bars you might notice that I drew the bars in the bitmap editor unlike the vector art that I used for everything else. Usually I don't like mixing these styles but it's important that the bars be pixel perfect so it was a necessity. And I kept the look close enough that you can't really tell if you don't know. Next I needed to add in some form of currency to the game. It didn't really make sense for this to be traditional money like why would a tree produce gold coins or something. So instead I decided that this is a magic energy producing tree that generates something called life force which would serve as the currency in my game. I created the animated icon for it and made it so that the life force UI only appears when the tree levels up for the first time and thereby starts generating life force. Speaking of which, I made it so that the tree actually starts to generate life force, generating more at higher levels. I also created all of the UI for the life force, so the numbers and the letters that represent the amount you have, because the default scratch variables are ugly, especially when none of the other art matches it. To me, creating custom art for this with a more appropriate font is absolutely essential. I did have to look up what letters conventionally represent present larger numbers. My other projects don't go above the millions, but I knew that we would be seeing some really massive numbers in this game and wanted to account for that, even from these early development stages. I got this displaying as I wanted it to be. If you don't know how these readers work, in short, each character is represented by a different clone with a value to say which character in the string it represents. It then switches costume to display the correct character in the string. The hardest part of this is actually setting the string that needs to be displayed, as once you get into the thousands, the variable has to be abbreviated using the letter K or M once you hit the millions and so on. I also needed a way to upgrade the tree, having a UI with a list of upgrades felt too obvious and overdone so I added in a building mechanic. I made a button for this and then created the first building, the bee search hut. And yes, there are many more bee puns abound so yeah, brace yourself for that. I then made a very basic tiling system for the buildings which was made very easy due to the side on perspective which meant that I only had to add buildings along the bottom of the screen. I made the UI for the build menu and got that displaying properly and gave the button some fun mouse over effects. I realised that the UI needed to display how much life force it cost to build anything so I added that in and got the building mechanic working with the buildings displaying once built. I also made it so you see a ghost of the building where the building will be placed based on your mouse position. But now you can place a bee search hut you really need to be able to do some bee search. I repurposed the build menu's UI for this and created an icon for the upgrade to your click power. I created a separate costume for each level to display the correct cost and did the same for the upgrade to the life force production. I got all of this to display when the bee search heart is clicked and got the clones to calculate the correct cost for the upgrade. And then I implemented the actual functionality for each of these upgrades. You can upgrade each 10 times. The final bee search option will allow you to discover bees so I created art for 10 different types of hive. I was coming up with these on the fly and while the first few, fire, water, air, earth, were obviously Obvious, typical video game element things, they do get a bit weirder later on with the candy bee or the zombie. There's also a robotic bee bot and saying bee bot always makes me think of these little robot things that my primary school had that could move forward and spin. Did anyone else's school have these? And obviously the scratch bee was just a nod to the platform of making this in. And I made the respective bees. I knew that in a contest like this art would be something that would really sell my project even if my game concept wasn't super innovative or unique. And I think these little cuties hit the mark. And I adapted these into icons for the bee upgrades showing the name of the bee and the cost. After getting that to display on the bee search menu, I made build options for each of the hives. Because there are so many, I also had to alter the build UI to accommodate scrolling through the different buildings. And after some trial and error, I got the prices for the hives to calculate correctly and allowed the player to build them. The hives speed up how much the tree grows, so I needed to create a log of how many exist. From that, I can calculate how much the tree needs to grow each second. And because there are more hives than places to build them, I needed to add in an option to demolish the hives, which I made a button for and implemented. And then I made a title screen. The title 
title might be the thing I'm the most proud of in this project because it's a concise double pun. Tree Believer. I wanted the title screen to be both interactive and reflective of the game, so I made it so that you have to click the play button repeatedly and a tree grows as you do so. I played around with having leaves growing from the side of the screen as a transition, but I decided that I kind of hated it and moved on. And then I started to put together a tutorial. I made art for a character to deliver this and to give it a smidgen of personality. This is Thumbelina, and I was super satisfied with the artwork I did for her. I tried to invoke B with her design, right down to her beehive haircut, and I gave her a white outline for what I tend to think of as a sticker effect. Then I made the text box and all of the dialogue. For the font, I wanted to avoid straight lines and perfect circles for a handwritten effect, and again I gave each letter a white sticker outline. I hate when games hamstring you into tutorials that you don't want or need, so I made sure to add in an option to decline Thumbelina's help. If you accept, she guides you through the core features of the game, growing your tree, building, and bee search being the main ones. And of course, I had to code the tutorial to activate when the game starts and to progress when appropriate, which is all fairly simple to implement. I just had to wait for either the spacebar to be pressed or for some other trigger like the tree levelling up to switch costume. I thought that having bees flying around in the background would be super cute, so I made it so once you have a hive of any given type, those bees can fly across the screen. I actually made a mistake when coding that took me ages to debug. A couple of the variables hadn't been set for this sprite only, which caused the positioning and direction of the bees to wig out a bit. And if you saw my recent devlog for the Fireside game jam, you might remember me adding a parallax effect to the background. I love how much that added to that game, so I decided to do something similar for this one. And then I added some sounds, which makes such a huge difference to how the game feels to play. Never neglect the audio side of game dev. Then I had to tackle music, which I do not have any talent for. As always, I just hit some random keys in Sound Trap and came up with something that I neither love nor hate. And I stuck that into the game on a loop. Now for a few housekeeping things. I made a thumbnail for the scratch page, did some general bug fixing and polish, and rounded things out by making all of the art for the itch page and filling out the information on the scratch page. From there, all I had to do was upload the game to itch, which does mean that I don't have anything more to show you, so thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe if you did, let me know that this is something you want to see more of, and apart from that, I'll see you next week with another video. Bye!